So, hello, in this video I'm going to make some ferric uh, chloride, which is uh, also uh, known as uh, iron-free chloride. And for this we're going to need some uh, ferric oxide, so iron-free oxide, of course, and hydrochloric acid, minus, minus a little bit contaminated, but that's not going to matter. It's probably chlorine or iron ions that contaminate it. Not sure about it. So, I've seen people do this synthesis uh, using steel wool but uh, I don't have any so I'm going to do this a little bit differently so for this you will need about 77 milliliters of hydrochloric acid 30 percent and about 19 grams of uh, the ferric oxide so the synthesis is really straightforward you just add hydrochloric acid to this oxide and uh, it reacts slowly, so we'll probably have to heat it up and then boil off the water and get our crystals of ferric chloride. So I will do that. I'm not sure if, not, uh, if it is not going to be too pasty, so I may add some water to it. We'll see. It's generally better to avoid adding too much water because concentrated acid is of course more reactive and will react with the oxide quicker. So yeah, I will do that. Okay. So as you can see, it's starting to react, uh, and it also gives us these nice corrosive fumes of hydro uh, hydrogen chloride. But you can see that uh, some of the ferric chloride is getting into solution because you will get that nice color. Uh, so yeah, I will have to probably wait a little bit longer. These fumes are getting annoying, so I will probably have to, you know, uh, get some kind of fan going. So, all uh, the ferric oxide didn't dissolve completely into the hydrochloric acid, so I will have to filter the, it out uh, using this simple gravity filtration setup. Uh, I don't have a vacuum filtration setup yet, so yeah, I will just filter it like this. So as you can see I have filtered most of the ferric chloride so I'm going to boil it down uh, and we'll see if we can get any crystals from it. So I have been crystallizing this uh, ferric chloride for a few days now and as you can see there's a nice layer of crystal and there's some still a little bit of solution left which I'm probably going to just decant. Uh, so hello again. Uh, good news is that we got 90.88% yield, uh, which is pretty good. And uh, as you can see, I got these nice chunks. But uh, you should definitely do it in some uh, cheap glassware because I had to literally chisel it out of this beaker. Uh, the beaker is fine, I tried not to break it. Copper, as you may know, doesn't re really react with much things. It doesn't react with hydrochloric acid. Well, it does react with sulfuric acid but at high temperatures. Uh, it doesn't react with organic acids unless you add hydrogen peroxide, of course, or uh, other oxidizers, but it's generally pretty unreactive. But uh, ferric chloride can actually react with it, uh, making ferrous chloride. So uh, ferric chloride is getting reduced and copper is getting oxidized. It's a redox reaction. So it's actually used to uh, as a PCB etchant. So I'm going to put this copper plate in this solution. And if I take it out, you can actually see that it actually etched away some copper. So I got some resorcinol here, dissolved in some water, and it actually reacts with uh, ferric chloride to make this complex. So let me add the ferric chloride. And you can see that the dark purple complex is formed. And this reaction is characteristic to phenols. 
and uh, it makes some kind of organometallic complex.